All right, in today's video, we're talking all about clippers and specifically when to reach for a clipper instead of a limiter. So we're gonna go over how clippers work, how to use them, when to use them, how not to use them, and we're gonna cover the difference between soft clipping and hard clipping, and we're gonna compare clippers to limiters, and we're also gonna keep talking about dynamics processing while we do it, so let's get on into it. So first of all, why do we clip? Haven't we all been told that clipping is a bad thing and we don't want any signal in our DAW to go above the red line because we could get that dreadful clipping? Now, if you've ever crossed the red line in your DAW and not heard any clipping, that's because most DAWs have a built-in 32-bit float. And that gives you a little leeway there, which is a good thing because that kind of clipping is very bad and we want to avoid it. But the kind of clipping that you get from a clipper does it in a much more controlled, strategic, and pleasing way. And the idea is, is you're trimming your dynamic peaks, which helps maximize your loudness and avoid the harsh kind of clipping that you would get by redlining on your master bus. Now, if we don't limit or clip high dynamic peaks, especially transients like you get from the kick and the snare, if we don't trim that stuff off, then we're missing out on a bunch of headroom. Ideally, what we want is to maximize the volume so we can get a loud mix. So limiters and clippers are key for that. And clippers and limiters both fall into the category of dynamic signal processing, along with compressors, maximizers, dynamic EQs, expanders, etc. So this is a great old school free plugin. This has been around forever. This is limiter number six by Vlad G Sound. And there's a lot of dynamics processing packed into this little free plugin. And if this GUI looks daunting, don't let it dissuade you because the interface is actually pretty user friendly. The signal flow comes in left to right and on the left you have a compressor and then you have a peak limiter and then you have a high frequency limiter, which is great because a lot of times when you're limiting, the high frequencies can pile up a little bit. So this is a way to squash those back down. And then you have the soft clipper. And then on the far right, the last stage is called protection. And this is where you can get your hard digital clipping and also your inner sample peak ISP protection, which we'll talk about a little later. When it comes to dynamics processing, one of the things I haven't explained yet regarding compressors is that compressors typically operate in either peak detection or RMS detection. Now, peak detection does what it sounds like and it's looking for those peaks. RMS is more of a general volume detection that's averaged over time. Now in the video, limiters versus compressors, I didn't explain the peak detection versus RMS because most modern compressors, when you engage the fastest attack, they switch over from RMS detection into peak detection. But this compressor here in limiter number six is strictly RMS. And this kind of illustrates the point is that the designer of this plugin knew that you would be using the limiter and the clipper to catch the peaks. And you wouldn't need peak detection on your compressor because all of the peak management is built into this plugin. So the RMS compressor is for groove and glue and rhythmic enhancements and stuff like that. And right up here, you can set if you want the input signal to hit the compressor first or the limiter, which is cool, because sometimes you want to limit the peaks before you compress, and sometimes if the peaks aren't too dramatic, you might go for some gluey compression and then get into some soft limiting. And when it's set to compressor before limiter, you can turn on the four times over sampling. And we'll get more into that later, but this is Vlad G Sound limiter number six, and this is what we're gonna be using today to show the difference between limiters and clippers. So let's talk about limiters compared to clippers. Soft limiting, or any limiting that's not a brick wall limiter, is basically a very heavy and fast compressor, kind of like the 1176. And soft limiting can let tiny dynamic peaks through, but it's great for gain reduction and for maximizing your loudness, and those tiny peaks that might pass through can still be clipped later down the chain by a clipper. Now, brick wall limiters are better than compressors for managing transient dynamic peaks. And they do this by using a look ahead and basically an infinite ratio. And brick wall limiters do not let any peaks through. 
and they do give us great volume increase, but no limiter replaces the role of a compressor. Compressors are great for getting the groove and the glue, so that's why you might put a limiter ahead of the compressor in the chain, just to manage those peaks. Because compressors have the hardest time with the high transient peaks, especially like the kind you get from a kick drum, because compressors also struggle when responding to the low frequencies. So clippers are another way to manage those peaks, apart from limiters, and in a lot of cases, they're even better. And with clippers, we have soft clipping and hard clipping. So between limiters and clippers, you could think of it as each one has a soft and a hard application, and they all have their place. Now, limiters squash those dynamic peaks back down to the threshold, and they prevent clipping. That's brick wall limiters. Now, clippers trim the peaks. They literally cut them off like scissors. And when you do that with a clipper, it creates harmonic distortion, but it can be the good kind. Now, clipped peaks compared to limited peaks can sound more rounded off. But if you were to examine the way the clipper is actually clipping the peak, it's not really rounding it off, but it does kind of sound that way. But the advantage to a clipped peak, as opposed to a limited peak, especially on a percussive transient like a kick or a snare, when you compare them back to back, a limited peak can sound pretty weak compared to a clipped peak. The clippers really do bring out the punch in a percussive instrument. So this is what the older version of limiter number six looks like. And in the bottom in white, you can see the waveform of this fat snare drum. And you can see that big spiky transient. Now we have Vlad 6 set to peak limiter here. And there's three different knee settings and type C is the cleanest. And this is set to brick wall limiter. And we're gonna go for about three dB of gain reduction on clean brick wall. I'm gonna bypass it back and forth so you can hear the dry snare compared to the limited snare. So let's compare that brick wall limiter to soft clipping with the knee set in the middle going for about the same amount of gain reduction. Yeah, so you can hear how the soft clipper adds those little extra harmonic distortions to the transient, and it enhances the punch. The peak limiter works great, but in comparison, the clipper is a little nicer because it makes the snare a little punchier and a little more fatter and rounder. So yes, in general, brick wall limiters are a bit more transparent than clippers. And brick wall limiters can still introduce distortion. So when would you use a limiter and when would you use a clipper? Now, limiters are pretty much better than clippers for vocals, bass, pads, especially things like cellos or horns, things that don't have a lot of spiky transients. Limiters are great for that. Now, clippers are typically a better choice on those percussive peaks, like on a kick and a snare, because they enhance that punch and they add harmonic overtones on top. The downfall to clippers, as opposed to limiters, is that it's easier to cause aliasing and more of that anharmonic distortion, especially if you're clipping at the high frequencies. Now, aliasing can be a problem with limiting too, but it's even trickier with clippers, which is another reason you really don't want to overdo it. But yes, clippers are great for drums, banjos, mandolins, a transient arpeggiated synth. Anything that's edgy and has spiky transients, a clipper might just be a better choice than a limiter. And like I said, brick wall limiters can be either really clean or they can be really colored. It kind of depends on the limiter and how you use it. Some of them do add a lot of harmonics, but clippers are always colored. The act of clipping always creates extra distortion and harmonic overtones, so it's easier for them to cause the aliasing and the high frequency distortion. Since one of the best ways to test your limiters or your clippers to see how much harmonics they're introducing is to crush a sine wave with them, that's what I want to go ahead and do. This is an A440 sine wave, and with Vlad G, you can turn on any or all of the dynamics processing. Right now, we're just going to do the peak limiter. And you can see down here, you can set it from brick wall limiter to soft limiter, and it also does mid-side and multi-band, which is really cool. But let's take a look at what this brick wall limiter does to this sine wave. If I start driving the signal into the threshold, you can see that no harmonics pop up over here. And right here where it says type, these are the different types of limiting. Right now it's set on the clean setting and you can see that it's clean. 
we're getting a couple dB of gain reduction and we're not creating any harmonic distortion. Now this is the hardest setting and a whole bunch of harmonics pop up. So that's the most crushing of the brick wall settings that this limiter does, and you can see the distortion that you're getting. So if you were to do this on a drum bus, you'd be getting a lot of extra color out of this brick wall limiter. So it's really helpful to get to know your limiter and see how clean it is. That way you're not just going on your ears, you can have some visual. Now if I flip it over to soft mode, you can see that we're still getting the harmonics. And same thing. We have the different knee settings and then down to the clean. So this limiter does the same as far as introducing harmonics, whether it's on soft or brick wall. Really good thing to know. And then when you're using it to manage your peaks, you can listen for that and you can see if you like the color that it's adding. So now let's compare that brick wall limiter to the soft clipper. And let's go ahead and crush this sine wave here. And look at all the harmonics pop up. So soft clipping does add more harmonics than hard clipping because it kind of changes the envelope and some clippers will do little zigzag jig jags at the top of the peak and some will fold them in and different combinations. So there's lots of different styles of clippers out there and they all manage the peak slightly differently. But the soft clipping can sound really, really cool as long as you don't overdo it and get too much of these harmonics. And soft clipping also can let tiny bits of peaks through which then can be managed over here by the hard clipper or a brick wall limiter. So when you're soft clipping things and little tiny bits of the peaks get through, they can be like a sample or two long. And you can see that the protection mode here does offer inner sample peak protection. So if you're soft clipping or even soft limiting, you can follow it up with a hard clipper or a brick wall limiter just to make sure that any little peaks that slip through get dealt with. Now, you might have heard a bit of a debate out there, different points of view. Some people saying that hard clipping is more transparent than soft clipping, and some people say the opposite. So I think the best way to understand the difference between hard and soft clipping is to actually shed some light on that transparency debate. In my opinion, what it really comes down to is, are you describing them being more transparent on the peak that's being clipped, or on the rest of the signal below the threshold? Hard clipping is more edgy on the ears compared to soft clipping. If you engage a signal at 3 dB, the exact same snare, and you switch back and forth from hard clipping to soft clipping, the soft clipping is gentler on the ears. And the soft clipping tends to sound a little smoother, a little darker, has more of an analog feel than the hard clipping does. And it does sound like the peak is more rounded off than hard clipping. And soft clipping does add more harmonics than the hard clipping. But the thing is, is soft clipping deploys a knee and that alters the dynamic envelope around the threshold. So the information below the clip when you're hard clipping is pretty much untouched. But when you're soft clipping, the information around the threshold is changed a little bit. The attack envelope is altered and the signal is being squashed a little bit on each side of the threshold before the soft clipping goes to work. So it is two different techniques and you can hear a difference. And I think that's why there's the debate about which one's more transparent. Are you talking about which one's more transparent on the peak that you're clipping or on the rest of the signal that's not being clipped? But whichever one that you prefer, it's really just a matter of taste. You just need to know the difference between hard and soft clipping and how they work and what they're doing, and you just need to know what to listen for. So now let's take a look at the waveforms. This is the original snare, and you can see the big spiky transient and notice the shape of the rest of the snare, the decay and the sustain and release. Now let's compare that to the brick wall limiter that we just did. So you can see the little tiny spike has been decreased a couple decibels and the rest of the decay and sustain and release has been fattened up a lot. And that's our increased volume there that we're able to get from the limiter. So back to original snare, brick wall limiter, and now soft clipper. You can see the rest of the waveform is even more enhanced by the soft clipper and look at this straight line right here. This transient has all been shaved off and even down into a little bit of the decay and sustain of the snare has all been shaved off. So original dry snare, brick wall limiter, soft clipper. 
So you can see the limiter totally does the job and it's awesome, but on something like a snare, and this is also true for a kick, the clipper might be the way to go. Look how much more headroom this is gonna give us. This is gonna make it so we can get this snare a lot louder without any of the spikes peeking over the red line. And if you squash it with the limiter to get down to this level of reduction, it's not gonna sound very good. Not on a snare drum, not this kind of gain reduction. So soft clipping is really awesome on something like a kick or a snare but you really don't want to overdo it. So what I recommend is trying a soft clipper or even a hard clipper in place of your limiter for these types of instruments and see if you like it. If you do, it's going to be more advantageous to you in terms of getting max loudness and headroom. Now a quick tip for if you're using a limiter that has clip mode. If you flip a limiter into clip mode, just make sure you use a really slow attack and a really fast release. So the takeaway here is grab a clipper on percussive sounds. I bet you'll like it better than the limiter. And you'll have to decide if you want hard clipping or soft clipping and just remember not to overdo it. But don't rely on clipping for all of your volume increase. Because it's so easy to overdo, just aim for a couple dB typically of clipping. You might get away with five or six, but that's kind of pushing it. And if you need more volume increase, just put a limiter after your clipper and squash the signal and increase the volume with the limiter as well. And don't try to get all of it out of the clipper. And definitely use a clipper wherever you need it, just like a limiter. If you need dynamic processing and the compressor just isn't cutting it and you need to manage those peaks, grab a limiter and or a clipper. And if that means that you're clipping your kick, your snare, your overheads, and your drum bus, all of them a little bit, that's great. You can use clippers to take off a half dB or a dB, maybe even two or three on say a guitar bus. Every time you use a little bit of clipping, you're smoothing out those peaks and you're getting an overall volume increase. And the more that you do that with clippers and limiters really, before all that information and all those tracks and buses go to your master bus, your master bus limiter will have a way easier time managing the peaks and giving you that increased volume to maximize the loudness of your mix. So using small doses of clippers wherever needed in your mix is only gonna improve the overall sound of your mix, the feel and the volume, it's all gonna improve immensely. So don't hesitate to grab a clipper or a limiter and get those dynamic peaks under control. And where needed, you totally follow up the clipping or the limiting or both with the compressor to get your glue and your groove and your feel. And remember, if you're going to limit or clip prior to compression to take care of the peaks to help the compressor work easier, you can still follow it up with another hard clipper or brick wall limiter after that compressor. Just do it to make sure that you're catching anything that got through and don't overdo that final step. If you're gonna do that much dynamics processing, just do all of those stages gently. But that will be a fail safe for any tiny peaks or inner sample peaks that got through any of your process and be one last step to getting max loudness, whether that's on an individual drum or on a bus or whatever. But the more you do all of that dynamics processing before those things hit your master bus, the happier you're gonna be and the easier it's gonna be to finish your mix on the master bus. So I hope that helped. Hope you got a lot out of that. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one.